Let's take a look at how we can make use of the newer APIs within Stripe Elements and how to use them with Laravel Cashier. So I have this series I did on Cashier in late 2020 and everything still works, but some people have been commenting saying that the documentation I used in this video has changed. So after I did some research, it looked like Stripe added a new product here. So if we go to this page and scroll down, the newer product is called Payment Element. And what we were using before is now called the Card Element. So like I said, everything still works, but the documentation has been updated to make it more in line with the documentation for this new payment element. So what's the difference between payment element and card element? There's another page here, which goes into detail. And if you scroll down, you'll see a table here. Basically the card element only supports credit cards, whereas the payment element allows you to select other forms of payment as well. For example, Apple Pay and Google Pay. So to accept other forms of payment, you can go into your Stripe dashboard. If you go to settings, payment methods, you'll see that I have credit cards and also Apple Pay, Google Pay, and there's a bunch of others here as well. So the payment element tries to detect what's available and shows it in the custom form. So for example, if you're logged into Google, it will show Google Pay. And there should be an example here. If we go into payment element, you can see that there's multiple options here whereas the card element only has support for credit cards. So that's the main difference. So my goal here is to recreate what we did in this video, but I wanna make use of this new payment element. So let's recreate this form, but making use of that payment element. So first, let me show you that this still works. Again, this is now called the card element, and this is the same project I created in that video. Let's just say person, I'm logged in as a username person. There are two plans here, which correspond to plans in Stripe that I created. So I have premium and standard. If you go to my Stripe dashboard, go to products, you'll see that I have premium and standard right here. And let's just submit this form with a test credit card. So if you just hit for two a bunch of times, that should be a test credit card. And hopefully this should work. So if I hit subscribe now, this should make use of cash here. It should populate the information within Stripe. And I have it redirecting back to the dashboard. So if you go back into Stripe here, if we go to payments, we'll see one that just happened right now. And it also populated our database with the correct information. So information about the user. So if I refresh this, you'll see that some of this information is updated. And let me just scroll over here. So we now have a corresponding Stripe customer for this particular user and some information within the subscriptions table as well. And just as a quick overview of what we did in that video, we're making use of Cashier and also a slightly older version of Jetstream, which is fine. So if you're trying to use this project, make sure you set your Stripe key and your Stripe secret, which you can find in your Stripe dashboard. And then for subscribe, which is not showing now, because we're already subscribed. Let me just log out and create a new user here. So let me just register this new user here. And here is the subscribe form. So let's go into our routes file and see what we did. So we have this subscribe route, which passes in an intent, which is a client secret that has to be shown on the front end. So you can see we're making use of cashier here and saying create setup intent, and we're passing it into the blade view. And then in that blade view, we're making use of that intent on the form here, right here. And then we're making use of Stripe's APIs as outlined in the documentation to grab a payment method, which you can find right here. So we pass in this setup intent that we get from Stripe servers. And then we call this Stripe token handler method once everything is complete. We add a hidden field on the form, which has this payment method. And then we submit the form, which goes to this route here, subscribe.post. We are creating a new subscription, which requires that payment method that we're passing through. So again, just make sure to watch that video if you want more details or follow the instructions for the card element. So now let's see if we can recreate the same thing, but making use of the new payment element. So I want a new view here called subscribe to. So let's change the endpoint to subscribe to. Let's make a new view called subscribe to. We'll name it subscribe to. We still need to pass in the intent, so that's fine. And let's save that. 
Let's go to our navigation to add that to our nav. Is it this one here? Let's look for subscribe. So yeah, it's this one here. So let's just duplicate this and add one for subscribe to. So subscribe to, and we'll say subscribe to here. Okay. Does this work? Okay, subscribe to. And we have to duplicate that route or the view, I mean. So here it is. Let's just duplicate this. Subscribe to. And let's just get rid of mostly everything in here. So let me just grab this form. Let's delete everything here. Let's get rid of the scripts for now. And then we'll re-add everything based on the new documentation. Okay. So let's just say form goes here. Does this work? Okay, cool. So let's go to the documentation here. So Stripe payment element. Let's go to quick start. And you can see a PHP selected here, but we don't really need that because we're making use of cash here. So let's take a look at the steps here. We don't need this because we have cashier. We're creating a payment intent using cashier, so we don't need this. Now let's load the Stripe JavaScript. As you can see, it's still using the same version as we did in the older video, which is version three, okay? So let's add this to our scripts down here. Next, let's initialize, or let's define the payment form. So let's add this form within our markup. So back to our code. Let's put it right here, save that. And this is where the form will get injected into an iframe. We have our submit button here. Let me just change the ID here to button submit. And I'm just gonna paste in some classes so it looks like a button, okay? And that should be fine for now. Let's see if anything renders in here, in our app. Okay, that's fine for now. Back to the docs. Let's initialize Stripe here. So we have to initialize it with our public key. And since I'm logged into Stripe, this is my actual public key. So we can just grab this. Actually, let's just grab all of this. We don't need items here. Let's grab this. Let's put it in a script underneath here. Okay, don't need this. Save that. You can see it's calling this initialize method and check status as well, which we don't need. So let's just call this initialize method after this. And let's go ahead and grab the initialize method here. And you can see it's an async function here because it's making a call to the backend to grab the client secret, but we already have that, so we don't need to do that. So let's grab this. Let's paste it right underneath here. Save it so it re-indents. I don't think it needs to be async because we don't need this call here. But we do need to initialize Stripe elements with the client secret. And like I said, we're passing this in from our RUTs file here. So right here, it's called intent. And that intent has a client secret attached to it. So we can do double curlies, intent, client secret, like this, okay. After that, we're creating a new payment element and mounting it to the div with an ID of payment element. So if I did this correctly, it should render the payment element form. So let me save this. Let's go back here to our app. Refresh. And it looks like it is rendering, but we have some CSS issues here. I think that's because we define styles in our app blade, which we no longer need. So this was for the card element and the old documentation. So all of this stuff we don't need anymore. So let's just comment this out. Let's save this. Let's go back here. Let's refresh. And now the form is rendering correctly. So now that we're using the payment element, we have multiple options to pay. We have our credit card, which is similar to the card element. But since I'm logged into Google, it also gives me the option to pay with Google Pay here. And like I showed you earlier, you can set up other payment methods as well. Okay, now let's go back to the docs and handle form submission. So after initialize, we have actually up here, we have an event listener. So it's adding one for the form submission and it's calling this handle submit method. So let's grab this. 
it's added after initialize. So back to our subscribe to after initialize here. Okay, save that. Let's define this handle submit method, or we can just copy it from here. So this time it has to be an async function because we are making a call to confirm payment. Actually, it's going to be a different method here, but let's just grab this. So all of this, let's go ahead and paste that in. So let's put it after initialize here. Okay, save that. And there's more stuff here, which has to do with the UI. So things like the loading indicator. So it says UI helpers here. There's one for showing the error message, which I'll grab, but we're not really going to make use of. And there's one for the loading spinner, which like I said, I'm not too worried about. So I'm not going to add that one. So let's just add this here. Save that. And I'm not too worried about the set loading here. Okay, so we'll remove that. Save that. And we're not actually going to call the confirm payment method, we're going to call the confirm setup method. It takes in the same params here. And we don't really need this because we're actually going to submit the form to our Laravel backend, and that will handle the redirect case. But by default, it does use this. So we need to add a setting here to make sure that it doesn't redirect. So redirect, if required. And now when we get to this point here, it should be the error case. So I actually wrap this in the actual error object, which we're grabbing from here. So let's do that actually. So if error, so if there is an error, then do all of this stuff. So I'm going to wrap this in curly braces. Okay. But if there's no error else, we want to do the same thing we did in subscribe in here. So we're adding a hidden field on the form with the payment method, and then we're going to submit the form. So let's just do it in line here. And this confirm setup method also returns the setup intent. So right here, setup intent. I believe that's similar to what we had in subscribe. So up here. Yeah, it's similar to this call here. Okay. And for now, let's just console log the setup intent if it's successful. So right here, console log setup intent. And this should contain the payment method, which we can pass to the hidden field and eventually pass to our backend. So let's try this out. Hopefully I did everything correctly. So we do want it to get here if there are no errors. So let's save this. Let's go back to our form here. Let me open up DevTools. Let's go to the console here and I'm just going to mash for two. Let's hit pay now and hopefully I did this correctly. That didn't seem to work the first time, but when I tried it again, it did work. So now you can see we have the setup intent. And within here, we do have this client secret, which we can add to a hidden field and then eventually pass to our backend. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, it's the same as what we did here in the setup or the Stripe token handler. So all of this, let's go back to subscribe to. So for the case where it's successful, Let's comment that out, let's paste this in, save it. It is called payment form, so that should be good. We're creating a new hidden input here. We're attaching it to the form. The name for that hidden field is payment method and the value is setup intent payment method. So this right here, which is what we need on our backend. And then we're adding it to the form here. And then we are going to submit the form. I don't think I set up that endpoint yet. So if we take a look at our form here, there is no endpoint here, so let's do that. So let's say method equals post and the action is going to be, let's say route, let's say subscribe to dot post. Okay. And this is pretty much going to be the same as the other endpoint. So let's go into our routes web. Let's grab subscribe post, which is right here. And it should be the same thing. Or we can just make use of this one, but I'll keep them separate. So let's just put it underneath here. Should be a post request to subscribe to. This is fine. We're doing the same thing here. So we're creating a new subscription for whatever the user selected. And then we're redirecting back to the dashboard if that's successful. Okay, 
Hopefully I did this right. So I'm logged in as Andre. Okay. Currently this user has no information within Stripe yet. Let's double check. So let's go to users. You'll see that there's no information here for Andre. Okay. So let's go ahead and try this out. So let me hide this. Let's refresh this. Actually, I forgot the radio buttons for the form. So these radio buttons. So let's grab that from our other blade view. Let's look for standard. So it's all within here. So we can just grab this and put it anywhere in the form. So let's put it above this right here. And I think we also need the ECSRF token. Okay. Let's paste that in. And remember these correspond to the products in Stripe. Okay. Let's give that a try. Let's refresh this. I'm oh, sorry, the wrong one, this one. Okay, now the plans appear here. Let's go ahead and fill this out. And hopefully communication with Stripe should be the same as the other form. But now we're making use of this payment element. Okay, so let's hit pay now and hopefully this works. Okay, so we are redirected back to the dashboard and I think that did work. So back to our database. Let's refresh this. We should have Stripe information for this user, and we do. And if we check Stripe, that payment should be in there. So let's go in here. Let's refresh this. And that new one is right there. And we can also see the customers that we have here. And here's the one I created earlier, and here's the one we just created. So everything is working. So yeah, I just want to show you that update in Stripe elements. Now we're making use of the payment element. And the older card element still works, but the documentation has changed to make it fit with the documentation for the payment element.